uh, okay um, we can now start generating some fake data so, um, it might look like uh, a waste of time in the beginning but uh, it will help us debug our API and uh, speed up uh, the development in the long term so to do this uh, I will show you a library called fakerjs which uh, I, I think it's there is a, another version for it in uh, PHP or Ruby and almost in all uh, other uh, famous libraries uh, famous uh, languages sorry so I will be using it I will put a link to the in the description for it so the first thing to do is obviously to install it I already did that to save some time npm install faker and to start generating some fake data I will show you what we I will just show you an example on how we can generate it then I will show you uh, then I will, wrote, I will write a code in a dynamic way so we can generate for each entity but uh, the general idea behind it since we included the, uh, the data since we included the type ORM module in our uh, application side, so inside the app module since we included uh, this module here so this is a static function which retains a module for root for root is a static function retains a module so as you can see, uh, it's called dynamic module. It's type, typed as uh, dynamic module. Um, so after we did this, we can. There is a. There is a global service which are. Uh, which exists for which exists that we can use. We can inject and use. So inside the constructor in our service. We can inject it. So it's called entity manager. So private read only so in uh, no here is, I will just call it uh, entity manager it will be of type of entity manager okay so this is like a generic entity uh, no no this is like um, a generic interface that you can pass it an entity and a set of data it will just do whatever you want with that. So it's it's just like an ORM, but uh, not related to an entity specifically. Uh, an instance of the ORM of the typed ORM. So what we can do, uh, for example, so we can just reference it. This dot entity manager to save. We have a save function. Yes, this first argument to it is uh, an entity. So I will give it to the user entity. And the second ar um, argument to it is the data. So I will pass to it uh, an array of objects. I will just close the sidebar. So we won't here have an autocomplete since it's a user, man user entity. Uh, we won't have autocomplete since the save function does not know what are we trying to save. To tell it, we can use the generic functions. They provide they provide us with a way to pass the type of the data we are using. So the first thing was the user entity. The second one is the user entity as well. But uh, this one, sorry, the partial user entity. Since we are not we since uh, well, let me just show you something. Since if you open the user entity, we have like the comments property, the likes, the ID, these things we won't pass it when we create a fake data. Uh, we won't pass the ID since it's auto generated. We won't pass uh, the comments, the likes, the followers. We won't pass all of these. Uh, we will only pass um, the about, the name, the email. Uh, even the created ad and updated ad, they will be auto generated uh, since the default is the timestamp. So now if I click control and uh, space, we will have all these properties um, displayed by us by Visual Studio. And this partial means uh, this second argument will be an array and e of objects and each object of type, this type here, the partial user entity. Partial makes everything optional inside the specific um, class or interface. There is a lot of um, good uh, helpers like this. I'm not sure what they are named in TypeScript, but there is a lot of them. One of them called Deep Partial, which if you have nested, uh, 
if you have nested properties, it will all make them partial. Yeah, deep partial. Uh, I rarely use it. There is also extend, exclude. Well, uh, you can Google them. I think like uh, helper types. I think or advanced advanced types. Yes, this is called advanced in under the section advanced type in the TypeScript documentation. Yes, I remember. Anyway. So here we can, now we have the autocomplete. I think previously I got an error because I didn't have partial. And if I saw the error. Yeah, I think we need uh, just, just add the partial here. It will fix this issue. Obviously we also need it. So. Uh, for example, I will have the about. So, the about will be. I will just put about name. Just be what my name and role. So we need to export the roles enum from the user entity. So just export. Save it, go here, and import it. Yes. And here the roles will be of type roles dot user. Okay, this is pretty hard formatted everything. And the last thing is the email. So I'll just test at test.com so this returns a promise so to get the return the resolved value from the promise we can put then chain to then so call the argument data will be partial user entity and all of that will be an array So console log data and catch just pass to it a callback function which is console.error. So if there's anything wrong we'll see. I think TSLIN there is a rule that uh, um, says that console log is not allowed. And just we can type this. So disable next line. No console. So um, I'll just clear clear my terminal. npm run start. We should see the data displayed here in the, in the terminal, and I will also see it in the viewer. So what I'm trying to show you here that there is a way to interact with the database uh, without the uh, entity repository, which we didn't look into it yet, but we will use it uh, once we start mapping controllers routes with controllers and services and but this is like a gene very generic way to do it and uh, this array will be replaced dynamically with an array generated from faker and uh, like a loop like for example uh, give me 100 user and put fake data inside of them pass them to this uh, entity manager to save function and that's it uh, theoretically, that's it. N we need to respect the relations between the. Um, we need to respect the relations between the tables and the database when we are faking the data. So this will take a couple of videos to finish it. I will, in this video, I will just I just explain the core concept and I will create the fake data for the user. So let's go into the viewer and open the users, and it will by default go to the data. So as you can see, um, we have the uh, user we added, So which is nice. So now uh, what we can do, I'll just stop the server. Uh, I will comment all of this. Since I won't, I won't, I won't do it here, I will leave this uh, service as empty as I could and uh, put everything inside uh, another class. I will, I will make the app service extend that class. So seed 
Dotty class, dotty us. Okay. And this class will be basically right now we will extend it in the future so export class called seed okay so private sorry so that will have a constructor and you need to pass to it the entity manager so this class won't be injectable okay and you need to pass to it the private the entity manager so I'll just copy it from here so you need to pass to it this since it's not injectable and the dependency injection framework won't be able to inject an object from the entity manager to it okay hope this is clear so here when we extend it extend seeds and inside the constructor we need to call super and pass to it the entity manager like this and we don't need to make it a, a property inside the holy class it will be just available the dependency injection will make it only available in the constructor no sorry not the dependency injection the dependency injection will only inject it uh, which means that it will create an object and pass it to the constructor but uh, this is a type sorry yes this is a typescript feature so when you put it like this this means it's a, a shortcut for it's basically a shortcut for one second hold on it's just a shortcut for this so this dot entity manager will be equal to the entity manager so this thing when you put the private inside the constructor then the name of the property is just shortcut for this uh, this uh, this thing here so I'll just remove this remove this so I don't want it as a property inside the class I just want the dependency injection to give it to me so I will pass it to the seed class okay I hope this is clear uh, now the first function we will create here is called fake it and uh, I will try to make so as you can see here we need to pass we, we don't need it's optional to pass some uh, um, types as a generic types in the functions I will try to implement them but as generic as possible I tried but it's a little bit hard so it's, it's not that perfect in my case so the fake it will accept a generic type I will call it T so it will you will, it will right at right now we'll just pass to it the entity of type money so and it won't return anything um, why does it complain? Yeah, it's just it's just slow. Anyway, so I will have a switch statement here for the entity. And here, if if the value is equal to user entity, um, I will just call another uh, two functions. So you can see if, if if it's a user entity, just generate fake data based on this object, uh, based based on a specific object. If uh, if it is a like entity, the like entity will uh, will generate data in, in different rules. So the first function for generating the data, I will call it private. We'll call it user data. This is not private. So private user data so this should return an array of partial user entity okay and for now just so this is theoretically a partial user entity yeah, since all the properties inside the user entity is empty, uh, is conditional. Sorry. So what we can do is return array. So we, we by default we will just create uh, like hundred user. So to do that, I, I will generate an array of length one hundred. I will map each element to um, an object which represent the user, and and, and I will use fakerjs to generate the fake data. So. 
a red dot from accept uh, an a mute iteratable like object so i just can type length 100 this is i think a better approach to add this inside the dot env so anyone clones your uh, repo they only need to change a value here so like for example um the seed seed num equal 100 and we will do the same thing from the main ts file we we'll put take these two and put them at the top and here the length will be um, process dot env dot seed num or 100 so this need to be this is will retain a string so just cast it to number okay so if you don't pass any of the the person who cloned your repo did not provide this variable inside the dnv just will default to 100 okay so it won't throw any error, error for uh, for him or her so for it after we generated a 100 in array a 100 uh sorry after we generated <laughs> an array of length 100 we need to map each value so it's now an 100 uh, array length each element of it is is undefined now to map it i will just pass a callback function which should retain an object okay um Yes. So each so we don't we won't here have any autocomplete since the map function does not know what are we trying to map it to. So to tell it we, we need to pass a generic function to it. So this is will be a partial user entity. Like this. Now if you go inside the object and type control space you will find all the all of the entities all the properties auto completed for you so email will be um, internet 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 dot email of, oh, okay yeah so I want to, I just wanted to type it then import it I will just uh, import it we're just just trying to figure out what is it so import from faker And uh, I will import uh, first thing. First thing I will import is uh, internet name random and lorem. Okay. So let's just return here. So internet dot email and this will be a function so invoke it and uh, name will be I will put the back stick is uh, the character next to the one key so this will be and this is how you inject uh, a string a variable inside the string so name dot uh, first name this is a function space name dot last name now role be uh, random this is the third function we the third object we imported so dot um, array element this will uh, generate this will pick a random element from the array and assign it to role so there is two options we have roles dot user and roles dot admin okay but uh, i want to make the possibility for the user to become to has a type user more than the admin so one thing we can do is just increase the number of uh, the user type inside the array but i want put it copy paste uh, I won't copy paste it five times here I'll just use something uh, 
more dynamic so array from so length of five dot fill so this will fill the array so this will create an array of length five and all of them will be filled by use by the user role and to the so this will be an array the first index will be another array then the second index will be the admin role so to this to put all the elements from the inner array inside the uh, you can say the parent array can destruct it by typing the destruct operator the split operator sorry that's it's called split operator so okay so now we have an array of length six five of them is the role user and one of them is the role admin and now about would be lorem dot uh, sentences okay and now another another function so this will return only the generated data so this those doubt uh, add data which we didn't implement yet so we need to best to pass this generated fake data into this function which I'll implement now and this function will use uh, the same concept we used here the entity manager dot save okay so private add data it will accept a generic type and will accept the data it will be an array of partial the generic type and another thing is that entity will type any, of type any sorry and it won't return anything so void will will return undefined but yeah void <laughs> uh, so this dot entity manager dot save and this will so i will show you a way how i make it as generic as possible but uh, i had to tap <laughs> as any in one place but yeah hopefully you can make it uh, better so the entity and the data so it will also so it will complain at the data I will just put as any it will leave me alone now but I think it's not a good practice at all since uh, it's just the whole idea behind that type of script is to have uh, types I think <laughs> and uh, but still, I like this about TypeScript. You can return in the ways, in the places you don't quite understand. You can just return to the, how JavaScript normally deals with these things. Just, just do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that then uh, the saved data will be of type array, partial array of, of the generic type and I will just console log the save data and catch the ca I will just let me just save so I have so pretty I will uh, format it for me and in the catch I will console dot error so why why I made this as uh, a generic uh, let me just disable the role why I made this as a generic function because the add data will uh, work for all entities so the Swiss statement will always call add data but the return data will be different so the, here if it's if it's a user entity return this data if it's a commit entity return different data but at the end they all will be passed to the add data that's why and uh, in the future i think we will pass a callback function to store this uh, to store for for example the ids of the user so we can reference them in another uh, uh, fake data arrays so for example let's say for example this is a comments a, a comment object so we have we will have a user id right we need to reference it from an from a user id we had so uh, that's why the callback function this 
well in the you when we get the user data when we add the user data we will pass to it a callback function which will store the ids of the users inside a property a private property from the seed so we can reference them randomly we will use the random array element from the array of user ids we get from the callback function here so it might, might sound a little bit uh, weird but when i implemented it uh, uh, will be really helpful and uh, i think it shows how uh, closures uh, can can be really powerful and helpful so what we need to pass here is the no what we need to pass to the add data the second thing is the entity so i think yeah so that's it and of course yeah remove the function it's not now not now okay i just saved it um to test it let's go to the app service and just call those.faked and pass to it the user entity so let's just npm from the start i will wait it i will just tell you something uh, of course we need to wait for the user data to be inserted then the other tables so we will be using uh, the async await uh, features in javascript here in a moment uh, but i think until now it's uh, pretty much good so hopefully we see a hundred user here printed here we have the 100 array but the idea is 101 this is something uh, i will show you i will tell you why so I'll just hit refresh here we have 100 user what 101 actually this is the first one we created and just to show you i, I already commented this code that puts it here but uh, what i understood that uh, type orm won't delete the previous data i think there is an option to pass to it but it won't so uh, i think it's good it's a good uh, safety check but uh, you can as usually just maybe truncate the table or uh, or we might, I mean, we might at the end just uh, in the CD class before we add the data, just delete everything from it. But I think it's now it's perfect. Yeah, I think we will just delete. But yeah, now it's perfect. Okay, thank you.